Hey, deserving listeners, this is part two in me reacting to the interview with Raquel, who is from Vanderpump Rules. She was on Bethany Frankel's podcast. And as I said earlier, I didn't realize until after I recorded all this reaction that there's a video version. So I ended up reacting to the audio version on Sunshinery's channel. So I hope that's okay with you. <laughs> I apologize. Let's watch or listen. There, just the two of you or shopping or yeah. lunch. No, yes. Okay. So how much do you think their relationship is real? Tom and Ariana. <laughs> I honestly, I don't know. I know. I would not be involved in this affair secrecy type of situation if I thought that there was longevity in this relationship between Okay, so to catch you up, Raquel talked about how she immediately after the reunion went to a facility. And I think that's why she frames it as love addiction, because a lot of these facilities, these mental health facility retreats kind of things, the things that are around Los Angeles, are geared towards addiction, which is a good thing. Because when you suffer from an addiction, then having a facility going to inpatient, especially if you can afford it, is um, you know a good first step. Recovery takes a, a lot of measures that go way beyond inpatient. There's a lot of things you need to do in the real world to sustain sobriety, but, but it can be an effective first step. You don't need to do it. Uh, often people will think that they need to do it, but you, you don't have to. So inpatient can help, absolutely. But what I think might be happening, especially in Hollywood, is that people will hear about people that suffer from an addiction and they go to these facilities and they think, well, I just went through something really difficult and people talk really glowingly about this facility, so maybe I should go to that facility. And it's possible that since the facility is oriented towards addiction, whatever problem you had <laughs> that led you to the facility, they will frame it as an addiction and treat it like an addiction, which I don't recommend that people do in situations like this. So I don't know. I, I don't know anything about that. She didn't talk anything uh, specifically, but I, you know, I can imagine that being possible. It's a similar thing when people like Tiger Woods are caught, you know, having an affair or having chronic uh, affairs with other people. And then he frames it, I believe, as a sex addiction. And then he goes to a, an addiction facility. And it, I, I don't know, there is such a thing as sex addiction, being compulsive around sex. I've treated people with this condition. It's particular, but it's rare. And having affairs would not be my, it would not be my first hypothesis that someone had a compulsive sexual problem. The typical person who suffers from a sexual compulsion disorder is that they are 24 seven thinking about sex, doing things regarding sex, pornography, sex workers, driving around town, shopping for sex workers in the newspaper. You know, some publications will have sex workers that are obscured. It'll be like, you know, intimate massage or something like that in the classifieds, that kind of thing. And these individuals that I've treated, that's what they're doing. It's 24-7. Like I said, at, at work, they're browsing porn. They're often frequently masturbating, this kind of thing. Um, having affairs uh, is not really conducive to the, to sexual compulsion because you have to find someone that will be willing to have an affair with you. That can take a while. You have to put a lot of effort into obscuring the fact that you're having this affair. And a lot of people having affairs, the sex component might not even be very intense or even present at all. A lot of people having affairs are doing so for emotional reasons, you know? Anyway, so if someone was having chronic affair problems, sex addiction would not be my first hypothesis. It could be, but I would, upon investigating if they truly did have a sex addiction, I would probably see a lot more behaviors in the affairs it was just one out of a thousand things that were uh, that the individual is doing every day. So that's just another reason why I'm just a little worried for people like Raquel who are convinced that this love addiction model is is the is the way to go. Anyway, but then she let's see, let's rewind this. <laughs> In this affair secrecy type of situation, if I thought that there was longevity in this relationship between Tom and Ariana. 
um, the people closest to them could see that their relationship hasn't been what they portray on camera. And Tom always told me like, they're a brand, they're an image. They work together to make brand deals. Okay, so this is a little worrisome. And I don't, I don't know why I expected more from Raquel. <laughs> but uh, what uh, this kind of tells me is she's still in denial and still making justifications. Because it wouldn't be hard for someone in Raquel's position, especially given all the treatment that she's supposedly been through and all the time she's had to think about this, it wouldn't be hard. I mean, if, if it's not hard for me to imagine this, given my very distant point of view, that it's quite possible that Ariana considered the relationship to be real, and they also were involved in a lot of brand deals. But Tom didn't consider the relationship to be real or didn't want the relationship to be real because then that would mitigate his guilt or shame regarding having an affair with Raquel. You know, you could see Tom struggling with his relationship with Ariana. And I've already hypothesized a lot about Tom's issues. My, uh, I think my leading hypothesis about him was that he suffers from you know, a moderate case of passive aggressive personality disorder, which isn't in the DSM, but it, it, is, it is a construct within psychology. And I'm not diagnosing him because it would be unethical for me to do that. Two, I know enough about personality disorder. It, it takes me months to diagnose a client with a personality disorder because there's so many angles of assessment that I have to fully investigate before I would ever apply a label like that. But a potential hypothesis worth assessing for with someone in Tom's position was passive aggressive personality, which is a result of being abused or mistreated growing up. And what the child will learn is that they have to suppress their needs. They have a complicated relationship with authority, not just authority, but attachments. They'll, they'll often see authority uh, attachments as authority, meaning that they'll see partners, you know, their spouses as like a parent, and they'll feel like they're underneath a lot because of the way they were treated growing up. And they harbor tremendous anger and resentment that is very secret and they're very prone to affairs because because of this, and they they will feel very justified in doing so. There there'll be just like zero morality because of their distortions. They are moral people, but they're so distorted. You know, I think my hypothesis with with Tom was that he harbored anger in this passive way, and thought he was communicating it to Ariana, but. He was not sufficiently communicating it, but he would sit there and stew in his own anger and resentment and pain and make up this story that Ariana was this bully who was looking over him and lording over him. And, you know, it's possible that Ariana was at times mean to him or uncaring at times. It wouldn't be unusual given the conflict that they were going through. But the distortion in his mind times it by 20 or something. And... For uh, him, he's sitting there, and, it, and then he thinks, I deserve more, I deserve better. And there's nothing wrong with that point of view, but if you don't have the distortion that your spouse is an authority to you, and you have a more, uh, you know, with passive aggression, the other phrase to use is hidden anger, uh, hidden hostility. So you have, it's normal to have anger and hostility towards your spouse at times, but there are healthy ways of expressing it and processing it. For those with passive aggressive personality, they don't have a healthy way of processing it. They feel very afraid to express it even remotely, even though they could express it in a healthy way. You know, they don't want to be violent, but, you know, it would have been okay for Tom, for example, I think, based on the story that Tom could have said to Ariana, look, I don't like the way you talk to me. Sometimes it hurts my feelings. Um, let's work on that. Or I feel like we're really distant. Uh, I, we don't have sex anymore. And, I, you know, I realize that you're depressed and and, and going through some stuff and, and I, that's okay, but I have needs and I don't know, is there something we can do here? My impression was he never approached her in that way and approached her more like the way a child would to a parent and go like, you know, it's normal for a 10-year-old or a 5-year-old to be passive about things because they're not mature. And, you know, without going down a whole road, listen to my deep dives on passive-aggressive personality, but, or dependent personalities is an ancillary personality disorder, you know, similar kinds of distortions. But anyway, so 
then he he feels like I deserve more. God damn it! And I, I'm going to get my needs met, and the way I'm being treated, it you know. And then he starts to have an affair, maybe more than one. And as he's having this affair, he is distorting it in his mind of well, this kind of writes the it balances the scale. Because that's how it feels to the passive aggressive person. They feel very put upon and they're projecting their parents onto their spouses uh, because they were mistreated growing up uh, legitimately. That They haven't healed from that or processed it, but they, they project it onto their spouse. And so they, they walk around the world just feeling incredibly put upon and mistreated, even though they're not being mistreated nearly as bad as what they think they are. And they think, well, by having an affair, uh, this brings the scales back to balance because, you know, all of the crap that I'm going through and I deserve this and I don't need to tell. It, it, and it's a mindset that uh, children will have, right? Uh, if an example of an immaturity that can express itself would be like a 16-year-old who has very strict parents who, you know, they don't allow the kid to socialize, leave the house or anything after school. And the kid at some point just says, you know, screw it. I'm going to sneak out of the house and I'm going to go party with my friends and I'm going to have sex or whatever. And I know this is going to, if my parents find out, they're going to be very hurt by this. But what else am I supposed to do? So when you're 16, you could say that the scenario I told is actually not immature. <laughs> it's potentially legitimate. It's like the way I framed the way the parent is. But you know, you can imagine a 16-year-old, even if the parents weren't very strict, right? You could see a, a, a you know parents who are like, look, you can't get Fs in all of your classes. You have to start studying. Uh, you have to get a job eventually and learn how to be responsible. And the kid, you know, the 16-year-old is like, oh, and it's a screw parents and I'm going to sneak out of the house and I'm going to party and they can't tell me what to do. That's a, a normal 16-year-old kind of thing. And the 16-year-old isn't considering the effect or even the intent that the parents have when they're trying to uh, get the kid in line, right? And uh, it's a very selfish way of seeing the world, right? And with passive aggressive people, they retain this into adulthood, which is can be very hurtful. To, you can imagine, to you know, just look at Ariana's pain. So, and that's another point of like this idea of the relationship not being real. If it wasn't real, then Ariana would not have had that reaction. We saw her reaction. It looked legit, did it not? It was unbridled anger, which if it was a fake relationship, then you, you wouldn't see that. Now you could argue maybe she's acting it up a bit, but it certainly didn't look that way. It's much more likely that the relationship was legit, that Tom has some kind of problem. I don't know if it's passive aggression or something else, but it, uh, and people that will have affairs will, especially if it's ongoing, will have ways of justifying it. We, we're, as humans, we are masters at justifying things. I mean, just look at people on the other side of the political spectrum, the kind of uh, gymnastics that they will go through to justify their position or to justify who they voted for. It's it's astonishing. We, we all do this. And if you're in an affair, and again, you have no one that is out from outside sort of confronting you on this and saying, hey, uh, you got to think what's going on. And there's no consequence that would prompt you to start thinking about what you're doing. Then, uh, especially if you have an immaturity and you have emotional issues along these lines, you'll do all the gymnastics that you need to do in terms of uh, justifying what you're doing. So you can imagine that Tom would justify this and, and feel like, yeah, it's a fake relationship. It's not real. This would make him feel less ashamed of himself. And then he says all that to Raquel. And because Raquel uh, benefits by believing Tom and doesn't have any outside influence and maybe is in love with Tom or something, then she believes it. But okay, but sh she still believes it. <laughs> he would think that Raquel would say like, well... Tom convinced me that the relationship was fake, but seeing Ariana's reaction, I, you know, I learned that the relationship, at least for Ariana, wasn't wasn't fake. You would just think that she would say that, but that's not. So it sounds like that I I didn't. Ha, I, there's been a lot of things that have been said that it's hard, it's been a half hour. I haven't been uh, reacting to all the clips individually, but the way Raquel talks, it's I don't know. It's still kind of in a space of not fully acknowledging. I think she does a lot better of a job of acknowledging and feeling remorse for Ariana than Tom was, but I'm not hearing. But of course, why would 
she changed so quickly. Maybe in 10 years, if she has a lot of opportunity and tries to further herself and and understanding, she'll have a more mature point of view. But, you know, she's not there yet, in in my estimation. And they are business partners. Um, Are they business partners? Literally, or just, you mean, in the show, being like a duo on the show? They're a duo on the show, and they utilize that for the success of their brand or image. Got it. And do they live together now still? They do. And also, you would just think, even if you thought this to be true, if you're Raquel, you would just think that she would refrain from saying these kinds of things because by now, you would imagine that she would understand the kinds of things that will provoke others to be angry at her, (laughs) you know, because a more diplomatic, self-preserving statement would be, Well, I don't know if it was fake or not. Tom seemed to think so, but I I don't know. All I can say is that Tom seemed to be very flippant about the relationship, whether we call that fake or whatever, I I don't know. But even if it was fake, it does not justify me having an affair with him and doing things behind a friend's back, that kind of thing. The other thing that uh, she talked about earlier was that she was refuting the notion that she was friends with Ariana and the others. And the data point that she provided was that she never saw Ariana, you know, it was never just Raquel and Ariana that did things away from the show. There there were a lot of things that happened on the show, but nothing outside the show. And thus, they weren't as close as the way that Ariana was painting it. And again, (laughs) even if you thought that to be true, it's just not a very diplomatic thing to say because it appears like you're trying to justify what you did. What does it matter that you were, you know, in terms of how close you were? You were friends of some degree and you lied and cheated. And the things you did on camera, like during the first nine episodes of season 10, when Raquel would occasionally be blaming Ariana. You know, Ariana would be complaining about her issues with Tom and and Raquel would be like, well, do you think maybe this is your fault? You know, kind of poking. Now, before people knew about the affair, you'd just be like, well, Raquel's just trying to offer an opinion. But when there's so many things along those lines while you're watching, it's it's pretty awful. So, you know, I... I want to give Raquel the benefit of the doubt, and maybe some of you can detect that in me. I definitely don't think that people should be attacking these two individuals. You know, there's a they've been through a lot, and even if they weren't on the show, they they would have gone through a lot. So I'm not saying we're supposed to hate her or go after her, attack her, make her feel bad about herself or something. She, I think she feels bad about herself. But I am hearing this. Because you would imagine this would be more in line with her true thoughts, right? On this podcast, she seems, because she has the space to kind of, and we kind of heard a little bit of this after the reunion, you know, those interviews. And then when Tom and her were talking again, it just seemed like there's still a significant part of her perspective that is in denial and not acknowledging what she did and still justifying things. And I I still kind of hear that right now, which is, well, what is it? Expected. Because you don't change that quickly, unfortunately. You don't go to an inpatient facility for addiction and suddenly emerge a brand new person. And she's not necessarily saying that, but I think that's one thing that this says. I think, I think it's just disappointing because when people, to me, it's disappointing to me, when people do things that are along these lines, I don't know, it just feels more safe or secure or pleasant to see people... Uh, having uh, true remorse and acknowledging what they did, it, it, it feels less safe when you, you have these examples of people that can just justify, because it's, I'm not in a relationship with, with Raquel, but I do have people in my life, and if humans are capable of this kind of justification to themselves and lack of acknowledgement of the other, you know, of harm on another human being, it it just doesn't feel very safe. I think that's what I'm going through right now. And I imagine maybe a lot of people watching would have a similar reaction. But I don't know, maybe she'll be more acknowledging as we move forward. His money was wrapped up in the bar, Schwartz and Sandy's. Um, And I know that Ariana's been doing a lot of brand deals. Um, Yeah. I don't know their situation, but I do know that 
it really isn't that surprising that they're living together in my eyes because it's been this way. They haven't been an authentic couple, romantic. So it doesn't bits. matter. So they're roommates. And- I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe she's right, but she's not convincing me that their relationship had always been fake. And maybe it was, but they're not convincing me of that. And, but, you know, they're saying that they're still living together, Tom and Ariana. And it's hard to know what that means. I don't know if Raquel knows what that means because it sounds like Raquel and Tom aren't talking. So, you know, people, when they are breaking up, getting divorced, uh, it can take a lot of time, economically especially, to separate homes. And especially if you have a large enough place where you can avoid each other sufficiently, then it can absolutely work to just continue to live in the same place. Who knows? But what Raquel is basically saying is their relationship was always fake, which definitely lets me off the hook as someone that had an affair with someone that was in a fake relationship, you know. And then the other thing that she's bringing up is that Ariana is getting all these deals. Let's listen to more of this. And it doesn't matter. It didn't. It's not as deep. And so the breakup isn't as deep either. And now seeing that she's doing millions of dollars of deals. So it takes three to tango in Scandival. And how does it honestly feel seeing that she's doing all of these deals and is America's sweetheart? Yikes. <laughs> so, so Ariana, it, now it needs to be acknowledged that Ariana was the other woman with Tom nine years ago. Tom was with, I believe, with a woman named Nicole and, and Tom and Ariana had a relationship. So, you know, Ariana is not squeaky clean. However, since then, anyway, it doesn't appear that she had any transgressions along those lines. And, okay, so for Ariana, she's a victim of some pretty severe infidelity because it was over a span of time. And not only, you know, it's one thing when you're betrayed by your partner. It's another thing when you're betrayed by your partner and your friend. Whatever degree of friend they were, they were friends. So to have two people uh, seeing each other behind closed doors and both people are interacting with you frequently, it, it really is hurtful, right? So Ariana is a victim of that and potentially traumatized by that. I mean, certainly in the reunion, I mean, the amount of emotionality she had with it, which is totally normal, the the anger and hostility that she had, at least unless she's faking it, which, you know, I don't think she was, but it's possible. But if she's not faking it, then, you know, that really points to tremendous pain and it didn't take much for her to to go there to the pain to cry and to emote along those lines which is totally normal she you know ariana might be suffering for the rest of her life and then add on to the fact that this is humiliating in the international you know public space not only because you're being cheated on but also because of the things that were outed right the things that tom made public and were highlighted you know around her being depressed or um, not wanting to have sex or having sex with her shirt on and you know just the kind of things that tom would say so so let me get this straight so ariana this victim and she's continuing with her career by making brand deals and and whatnot and and america's sweetheart maybe yeah maybe people feel bad for her and are identifying with her who knows now is ariana perfect as a human being. No, we've already established that she's not. But um, the fact that in terms of who people would rather hang out with (laughs) as a friend, uh, that they'd rather hang out with the Arianas of the world rather than the Raquels and the Toms, especially the Toms, um, that makes her America's sweetheart. So what? And it takes three to tango? (laughs) victim blame much? What did Ariana do? Yeah, We can talk about the problems that Tom and Ariana had, and, and absolutely, Ariana was a player in their problems, right? Hard to know. It, it wasn't super convincing. You know, the kinds of... Th- the, the one thing that Tom would say was that he would say that Ariana would criticize him, which I, I could see that. I don't know if it was severe, but, you know, we could imagine that it being hurtful. That's, I would call that on the scale of transgressions and the way that Tom was painting it, anywhere between like a two and a four, you know, on the scale from one to 10, with 10 being very severe. Cheating on someone, <laughs> I would put up there with eight, nine, or 10, right? So 
it, again, that mindset that Tom has around that it, 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 it balances the scales. So it takes three to tango. Uh, it takes two to tango in conflict. It does not take three to tango for infidelity. <laughs> I mean, the thousand, I just want to emphasize this, and I did this during when I watched the Vanderpump show earlier, the thousands of decisions and whys in the road and behaviors that were deceptive and hurtful, the lies, the obscuring the truth, the omission of the truth, the flat out lying straight to Ariana's face, just day in and day out, just thousands of opportunities to right the wrong and and choosing not to. The thousands of times where you could say, maybe I should figure out what's happening here before I continue with this affair. Because we have to remind ourselves, they were outed. They did not step forward. Would they? And they, they said we were going to, but do we really believe that? It's possible. I would not put my money on that. If we had a time machine and we could not have them outed, I would not put my money that they were going to tell Ariana about the affair a, a, a couple months later. I, I think they were saying that anyway. They might have, but it certainly, I mean, especially hearing, because I don't know if we can really trust Tom in terms of his integrity. So if anyone I think was going to do the right thing, it would have been Raquel. But hearing this, it's um, it's upsetting. To uh, takes three to tango. <laughs> what? All right. Well, that's it for that episode. I want to thank Sunshinery for posting this, and everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.